This is my review of the Made in Abyss movie, Wandering Twilight. And for once, I finally got to wear my uh, Made in Abyss shirt to the movie. It was it arrived a day late for the last one, so uh, that's good. So the movie uh, basically takes place exactly right after the first one ended. Uh, they're going down the big hole, and for the most part, uh, it's fairly accurate to the anime. I'm not sure about the manga, I haven't read that yet. But fairly accurate to the anime, with two notable exceptions. The first happens shortly into the movie when they're climbing down the rock walls and they come across the big boat. They fight this ugly SOB right here. And uh, then it's like, oh, I need to use my laser beam. Oh, no, nah, I'll just use the uh, exploding pickaxe we just got instead. That's very different. In the anime, uh, he actually does use his laser beam. He misses completely. And then it's a whole episode or two hours of uh, Rico just trying to get away with Reg's unconscious body, which amusing. I mean, certainly I understand why it was taken out. It's not critically important to the story in any way, but yeah, without it, Rico really doesn't do all that much in the movie. I mean, she's literally one of the two main characters and she's blacked out for... 80% of the film. Don't get me wrong, she has still some good moments when she says, you need to cut off my arm, and has him do it at the uh, wrist instead of the elbow so she can still use some uh, rating equipment. That's, that's freaking badass and I love her, but she's still just mostly asleep for the movie and it's a little sad to see, you know, she doesn't really get anything to do in this film. Uh, maybe the next one, but... uh Seeing the poster, maybe not. The next scene they cut out was near the end of it. In the anime, there's a whole thing where they go back to the village and they talk about the birthday illness and the one little kid in the village is really sick and they need to get him off the island and once they do, suddenly he's all better. That's not in the movie whatsoever, which... Again, it makes sense that they're not critically important to this story. And based on the poster, I'm thinking it might play more of a role in the next movie. That's just uh, speculation. Though. Like I said, I don't know, actually know anything about it besides what I've seen in the anime, but it could make more sense if they include that in the next movie. But still, without it... Uh, without it, the orphanarium and all the kids and their whole life outside the abyss just feels too distant, too separate from what they're experiencing right now. Like when he gives the guy the message to, oh, give it to him, tell him that we're continuing on our journey. And it's like, okay, now who's that kid again? Which one are they giving the message to? Because, again, I mean, they played a role in the first movie, but that was just so, that's so long ago. I've literally forgotten about them. I mean, the same issue is with the uh, ending scene in the movie, you know? They make the balloon, they lift it up, and like, oh, this will find its way back to our friends somehow. And like, half its journey, half its trip up the, the abyss back to their people covers things that weren't in this movie. They were characters and monsters and whatnot from previous mo from the previous movie. So it just feels less impactful than it would. It, it feels less impactful than it did when I first watched it because then I binged the entire, you know, anime in like three days. So that was stuff I'd just seen the previous day. So I'm like, oh yeah, there's that, there's that. It felt emotional. Here it's felt, oh yeah, there was that. Who is that again? Of course, that's not to say that I didn't like the movie. I loved it. I mean, even though I'd already seen everything, I thought, oh, I'd go into this. I brought a friend, so I'm like, oh, she's going to freak out. This is going to be fun. But, I mean, the arm-breaking scene, was it still hit me. It still teared me up. It still, it still shook me to my core in ways I did not expect. I mean, the first time I saw that, I was literally in shock. I'm like, for basically the entire night. And this time, not quite as much, but I still teared up a little. I was still just uh, applaud, just... <laughs> The voice actors for this movie were absolutely incredible. In those moments, they were... You really could feel their pain. You really could feel their anguish. And it was just so well done. I really loved it. And the sound the sound was just next level in the movie theater. I mean, when she first gets the spike through her hand and she's been poisoned, you hear his heart beating and it's just so loud and impactful. It, it literally shakes you to your core. Boom, 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 boom. It's just such a better moment in theaters when you can really feel that sound hitting you.
The rest of the movie was great too. Nachi came off as a bit more of an ass in the beginning than I remembered. With my friend even turning to me and say, Why is she such an ass? But we both just fell in love with her again as the film went on. She's so fluffy! Ah, I actually read somewhere, I'm not sure if this is true, but uh, she saved the series. Like, they had very low readership, not a lot of people were interested in it. And then they brought in Nanachi, and people were like, Yes, I love this series, keep going, it's great, it's amazing, it's wonderful. I could believe that, she's just that adorable, she's just that fun to have around that I could see her literally saving the series. Oh god, the meaty scene, the meaty. Ugh. I mean, her death was just something else. And her transformation, that was... Oh god, that was so much worse than I remember being. As She's just reduced this monstrosity. It's sad, and it's terrifying, and it's disturbing. And it's... You just really remember why it is she prays for death. Because she is just so broken as she is right now. And then the movie ended with an odd scene. It was definitely not in the anime, I definitely remember that, but the masked man, the one who mutated uh, Nanachi and Midi, I forget his name, but he has a kid, or at least there's a child that calls him Papa, which, yeah, that's, that's weird, that's, I mean, I can understand maybe she's just one of the test subjects who's somehow immune to the abyss, so he's planning to care about her. To use her as a test subject or something, but I almost feel like maybe this really is his child. Maybe he really does care about her. Maybe everything he's done, all the test subjects, everything has just been his way of trying to find a way to cure her of her illness. I mean, he said you need to get lots of rest, so maybe she's sick. Maybe she has the birthday illness, or maybe she's the cause of the birthday illness somehow, which could be why they didn't include the scene. And it's going to play more of a role in the next movie, but it could be that everything he's done up to this point has been trying to save his daughter, Proshka, I think her name was. And if that's the case, he's a far more conflicted character than I ever imagined. I mean, the whole movie I was praying for his death again and again, then I saw it with his daughter, and I'm like, oh, he's going to die, and she's going to be so sad, isn't she? So, yeah. All in all, great movie. I've seen it before, but I love seeing it again. My friend uh, described it as worse than any horror movie she's ever seen. And she loved it, so... <laughs> I think that's a fair description of the film, all in all. Again, just absolute applause for the voice actors in this movie. I mean, in those moments where they were truly in agony or truly in despair, they came across so well. I mean... When Meaty begged for death, I mean, you could truly hear the actress just wishing to die right then and there. When Reg just begging for someone to help save Rico, you can just truly feel the desperation and despair in his voice. And it just, it just all came across so well in the theater with the great acoustics. I loved it. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the movie. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Did you like the movie? Did you hate it? Did you find it disgusting? That's a... Common complaint I've seen online from people that the film is too... Can't really describe it in a way that YouTube won't dislike, but you understand what I'm saying. To me, that never really felt like it was done for perversion's sake, but more for the sake of realism. Like, if this was a real situation with these things really happening, then these events, as they were seen, would likely happen. If you get what I'm saying. Like the medicine, that's the appropriate way to give it to someone if they can't swallow. And there are a few other things that I would go into detail, but I really don't want to, and YouTube doesn't want me to either. So, uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time. Peace.